so you've got your introduction, you've gotten your conclusion done now, you've got the body of the paper done now, now you want to go back and read the whole thing over again from the start and look for these elements uh, in the revising process. So is it clear which sentence in the introduction states your main point? Is it clear where your introduction ends? Now it's a little bit easier uh, if you use headings and subheadings, because then, you know, it sort of signals to your reader, yeah, this is the end of the introduction. If you don't use uh, subheadings and headings, then it's going to be a little bit more ambiguous. There's nothing wrong with using headings and subheadings. In fact, I encourage it. Now, if it's, you're writing a thesis, then you're going to, it's going to be broken up into chapters, but even within chapters, you can have headings and subheadings. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. I, you know, wrote my own dissertation that way. Um, it, it helps your reader actually. And, and, and it, it can also help you as well. Um, keep on track, right? In this subsection, you're only going to talk about that. In another subsection, you're only going to talk about that. It keeps you organized, right? Um, and the same thing there. Is the beginning of each section and subsection clearly identifiable? If you use headings, then it will be easier to make it clearly identifiable. Is it clear how each subsection or section follows from the previous? So there should be, um, you know, use signaling phrases such as, now, you know, this brings us to this point, or... Um, following from the last point like that, right? So the, the idea is that it should flow naturally from one section to the other using connecting phrases like that. And those phrases will also help your reader see, if you don't use headings, those kinds of phrases will help your reader see where the, the end of one section is and the beginning of the other is. Um, is it clear what role each section plays in light of the whole? You don't really want uh, extraneous paragraphs that that aren't part of the main argument and this is where the footnote uh, um, style is really helpful because if there's something that you really really want to say but it's not a really it's like a really interesting tidbit let's say but it's not really part of the main argument put it in a footnote there's nothing wrong with putting in nice fat juicy footnotes um, the people if they if the reader wants to read them they can if they don't want to read them fine um, but don't, you know, try to try to make sure that each section in the actual body of the paper plays some significant role in light of the whole. Anything that doesn't, stick in a footnote, all right? Or leave it out. But if you really want it in, stick it in a footnote. Is it clear what sentence in each subsection or section expresses the main point of that section or subsection? So it's not just that you have a thesis of the paper as a whole. You have a main point even for each section. Right, so make it very, very clear what that sentence is. Do your key terms, and I had mentioned this before, do your key terms run through all section of the report or all sections of the paper? As you read through, so when you're revising, as you read through your paper, circle the key terms to ensure that they do and make sure that they're used continuously that you use terms if especially if they're technical terms that have a significant meaning make sure that you're always using the same terms in the same way all right and that you use those terms throughout the entire paper so that there's some continuity also make sure of your spelling and if you use certain words like the word church for example students will often flip back and forth between using small c and large c um, I mean, that makes sense if you're, for example, talking about the church, um, you know, the Anglican church, for example, well, then you're going to want to use a large C there. But if you're going to say the church down the road, just the building, then you're going to use a small C there. So that makes sense, you know, using a, a big C in one case in one instance and a small c in the other instance because there's a different meaning. But if you're it, throughout the paper referring to, for example, the Anglican church, then if you want to use a, lar a large c, use a large c throughout the whole paper. Or if you just don't feel like using a large c, if you feel like using a small c, fine. But do it throughout the whole paper. Don't flip back and forth uh, use in your use of capitals, okay? Just be consistent. So it, it, once, when you look for that kind of consistency right from the very beginning, you might like when you when you have like at the beginning, when you've determined what your key terms are going to be, even before you start writing, when you've determined what your key terms are going to be, 
you should decide right then and there whether you're going to capitalize them, all right, and do so throughout the entire paper because it's quite frustrating for your reader to, you know, see this kind of flip flop back and forth in your use of capitals. Is it clear where your conclusion begins? Is it clear which sentences in the conclusion restates your main point, uh, states it more fully, and raises questions for further research? So just make sure that you know uh, go through your your paper when you're revising, and just make sure that you have a check mark on all of those questions that you've gotten them all down. Okay.